yeah, you can understand why people just don't want to wait and they just stay on either TRT or steroids forever. Hey guys, Fitness Science coming at you with a really interesting study about how quickly men recover from using anabolic steroids. So this was a study done here in Australia that split men from 18 to 55 years old into three separate groups, current steroid users, previous steroid users that have now stopped and non-steroid users that have never touched a steroid in their life. And they were really looking at how quickly they recovered in terms of sperm and semen analysis, as well as hormone analysis, and they also looked at cardiac function as well to see if that firstly was um, had any dysfunction in the steroid user group, but also how quickly that would reverse itself once they stopped using steroids. So this was like an observational type study in which they gave a questionnaire to the steroid users and all the participants about what types of steroids, how long, and all different types of data about basically what they've been using. They found that the mean age of first use was around 25 years old in the entire group and 16% of men started under 18 years old, which is pretty scary. And the median duration of use, so how long they're on average using steroids or using a cycle, um, was two and a half years pretty much. In terms of what the current users were using as well as the past users, there was a wide variety of drugs that they were using. Any androgens was the most common, but a synthetic or alkylated androgen were um, also very common as well as obviously testosterone and an anti-estrogen. And then there was actually the drugs themselves. So injectables was the most common followed by oral androgens and then HCG as well, which we would assume um, would be for post-cycle therapy as well as aromatase inhibitors as well as the other PCT drugs such as clomiphene and tamoxifen, growth hormone as well, insulin, thyroxine, some sort of diuretics was pretty common, SARMs wasn't that common, only two in the current users and three previously had used SARMs, PDE5 inhibitors was also very common and then your recreational drugs as well as creatines, um, fish oils and livers, liver detoxes. Pretty much they covered all drugs here. So it was a pretty comprehensive list of what they actually looked for. And then in terms of reproductive function, obviously the current users had very suppressed LH and FSH, which weren't exactly zero, which was interesting. And then testosterone was obviously a lot higher in the current user group. DHT was higher, estradiol was obviously higher as well. And then obviously the sperm volume and the sperm function was slightly reduced as well in the current user group because we know that sperm function when you're on steroids is pretty much um, not wiped out entirely, but with a high enough dose, it is pretty much gone, yeah. So let's take a look at what they actually found in terms of recovery. So hormones, interestingly, actually recovered faster than the sperm parameters. So luteinizing hormone, which is a really good marker of testosterone synthesis because the lighting cells have luteinizing hormone receptors. So we know that when luteinizing hormone is boosted back up or recovers back to its pre-cycle levels, then the lighting cells are ready to make testosterone again. And luteinizing hormone took about 11 months to recover back to baseline levels after cessation of steroid use. But sperm Sperm output took 14 months and follicle stimulating hormone took almost 20 months on average to come back. So follicle stimulating hormone being a parameter on sperm output and sperm efficiency and quality took almost 20 months to come back. That is absolutely huge. And you can understand why some people just never want to wait. Like, you know, even luteinizing hormone, a full 10 months, that's almost a full year to wait for their hormones to come back. And even then it might not have even come back to you know, normal levels. It's like, do you really want to wait that much longer? Um, yeah, you can understand why people just don't want to wait and they just stay on either TRT or steroids forever. And interestingly, the age of the participants didn't affect their rate of recovery at all. So this idea in the fitness industry that if you're younger, therefore you can just recover quicker may not actually be true. And remember this study was looking at people up to 55 years old who were using steroids. So that's a pretty significant finding in that they found that age, i.e. people 18 years old were not recovering any better or worse than people that were 55. So this idea of being younger, therefore you can sort of get away with it may actually not be true. So the usage pattern as well, so whether the participants were cycling or they were just blasting and not coming off at all, didn't make any impact on the recovery either. 
Again, this idea that you have to cycle to keep your um, testes sensitive or you know allow your levels to come back may actually not be true either because in this study they found it didn't really matter if you cycled or you were continuously on hormones. And even PCT, so the participants that said they had done PCT didn't really recover any quicker than participants who just did nothing. And just as a side note in terms of cardiac parameters, the current users had a greater left ventricle mass, which makes sense because the heart is a muscle and it grows in proportion with the anabolic signaling that it receives. And the left ventricle function as a result, when the heart is thicker, it can't pump as efficiently. So the left ventricle function is actually slightly reduced. And this is what they found in the current users, their left ventricle function was slightly reduced. Everything else looked normal in terms of cardiac parameters and atherosclerosis wasn't increased or decreased between the groups. Um, so the biggest conclusion from this study is that you can recover from steroids if you want to, but it takes time and potentially PCT as well as how you've actually done it in terms of cycling or continuous plus your age may actually not make a difference at all. It may just be about time and waiting the 12 months that it may actually take for all these things to come back to normal. Yeah, so, well, I say 12 months, but it's actually about seven to nine months for the hormones to come back. And then, you know, it could take even up to 20 months for follicle stimulating hormone to come back. You can really understand why people just never want to come off. You know, they're looking at down the barrel of 12 months and it's not even like you can, you know, train very effectively during those 12 months. It's like you lose all the muscle mass anyway. So it's a vicious cycle because you've lost the muscle mass. So you just hop back on and then you lose it again and you never actually can wait that 12 month period. But yeah, um, it's a very interesting study in that they actually had people wait this long and 12 months is um, certainly a long time to wait for some of these values to come back. So if you are a steroid user, uh, you know, be aware, or even if you're thinking of using steroids, just be aware that to come off is not easy. It can be a very, very long road to get back to normal levels. And um, the one thing that they did find, especially in the sperm parameters, was that the longer you're on, the harder it was to actually come back. So the downfalls or the negatives of this study were that it was observational in nature. So it was done through a questionnaire. So what's stopping people just lying about what they're using or what they're doing? So that could introduce some bias as well as the fact that they didn't actually take a urine test throughout the study to ensure that the participants were not using steroids. That would have been a nice thing to do just to ensure that it was truly what they said. But apart from those things, I think it was a pretty rigorous study and it just serves as a really big reminder that, you know, once you hop on to steroids, um, it can be a very, very long road to come back. You know, if you are a young male on testosterone or on steroids, just keep a track of your health. Don't be scared to go and ask for help from a doctor. Um, if you can find a good doctor, then they're not going to look at you negatively. They're going to recognize that potentially you may be a young man in need of legitimate help and, um, you know, don't be afraid to go and ask for help if you need it. It is so important to keep young men out there safe. And um, this is a huge public health issue that is going unnoticed. So you can understand when you look at the, some of these numbers, like 12 months, it's just crazy. So thank you so much for watching, guys. Please continue to train safely. And this is um, all about bringing you the science and literature of fitness and your training. Uh, so yeah, thank you so much for all the support. I really appreciate it. And I'll see you in the next video. Fitness Science, signing out.